everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today I decided I would reshare the first recipe I ever put up on my channel and that is for oil roti. Now since I started my channel, my video quality has gotten much better, my editing skills have gotten better, as well as my comfort in front of the camera. I'm not as stiff as I was before if you guys noticed from my previous videos. So I decided today to recapture that roti recipe. If you guys remember the first video, the camera was pretty far away. You couldn't see the step-by-step -step details on how I was making it. So with this, I hope to recapture it in a closer view so this way it can make it simpler for you guys. This is the most popular video that I've had up on my channel. So it means that a lot of you guys want to know how to make roti at home and know how to make it well. So with this video, I hope it makes it better for you guys and I hope the quality is much better. So, I hope you guys enjoy. Go ahead and tell your family and friends about this video because they are going to want to try it out. My roti comes out nice and soft. It comes out super flaky and fluffy. And I get those round rotis. So, we're going to start cooking, guys. I hope you guys enjoy. For my roti today, I'm going to need some all-purpose flour. I'm going to need a little bit of extra dry flour to go ahead and roll out all of my rotis. I have some baking powder. And I have some vegetable oil to oil them. Now, if you wanted to, you could use butter, you could use Crisco or shortening, you could also use ghee, or you could use a combination of any of those with the oil. It really depends on your preference. I just prefer to use the regular plain oil. And I have some water to go ahead and mix up my dough. The first step when making your roti is to get all of your dry flour into a bowl. And you're going to go in with all of your baking powder. And then I'm going to add in about a few tablespoons of oil. What this oil is going to do is it's going to make the roti nice and soft. I added about three tablespoons of oil into that flour. And you just want to work that in and mix it up together. Now a little word about the baking powder. As I said in my first roti video, the more baking powder you add, the more like a bread your roti is going to come out. It might come out very hard and stiff with all of that baking powder. So you want to try to not use too much. Try to go by the measurements that I provided below and your roti will be nice and soft. So once you have all of that oil mixed in, you're going to grab your water and you're going to start adding water a little bit at a time. If you're making this for the first time, you really want to go slow with that water so this way you don't add too much and make it too soft. If you've made this a few times, then you'll sort of know how to gauge your water already. And when you're making your roti, you want to use warm water because if you were to use cold water, it'll make your end product pretty tough and it could also make the roti a little dry. So I'm going to continue adding water and I'm going to get all of this flour incorporated and I'm going to come back and show you guys what that looks like. Once you feel that you added enough water, you just want to continue getting all of the flour incorporated into the dough. You also want to go ahead and scrape down the sides of the bowl with your hands. By the time you're done making this roti, you should end up with a mostly clean bowl. You don't want to leave too much flour or dough sitting at the side. You want to try to get it all incorporated. Now my doughs come together and it's still sticking to my hand a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in a sprinkle of dry flour. This is why it helps to have a little bowl of dry flour standing nearby. So this way you can add it in if your dough needs it. So once you've incorporated the flour, you do not want to knead the dough too much. You can knead it for about a minute. Once you've properly kneaded your dough and it's nice and soft, you want to go ahead and start separating into little balls. Now you can make your rotis as big or as small as you'd like. I like a nice medium sized roti. So I have a little ball here and you just want to sort of roll it like that to get it smooth at the top. And you're just going to lay it down on a baking After tray. After I separated all of my dough balls and I smoothed out the tops, I went ahead and I let them sit covered with a damp paper towel for about 10 minutes. So this way the dough could relax a little bit. At this point, I'm going to start rolling them out to fill them with the oil. So you just want to keep them covered while you're rolling and you want to just take one out to use. So the first step is to go ahead and dip the ball of dough in some dry flour. And you want to spread it out a little bit. And you want to just start rolling. Now if you need any more dry flour while you're rolling it, you can go ahead and sprinkle a little bit on top. And at this stage, it's not that vital to get the 
dough as round as possible because we're still going to roll it out after this for the cooking process. So this step, it really doesn't matter if it's round. You just want to spread it out enough so this way you can get as many layers as you can within that roti. So I think this is good for me. It's nice and thin. So what we're going to do now is called oiling the roti. So you want to dip your hand in this oil. And you want to just spread it all around the roti. If you want, you can use a brush for this or a spoon, but I find that your hands are the best tools in the kitchen. So you just want to spread enough oil till it gets all the way to the ends. And you want to sprinkle on a little bit of dry flour. Now what I like to do is you could go ahead and use your finger for this. Cut through the middle. And then you fold the side in. And you fold the other side in. And you make sure the bottom is folded in as well. And then you can start rolling the roti in on itself. Now this is the way that my grandmother taught me how to make roti and oil it. And then once you get to the end, you want to go ahead and just tuck it in. And once you tuck it in, you're done. You just flip it around, pat it down, and you have one roti oiled for you. So I'm going to put this back on the pan, and I'm going to show you guys how to roll out another one. So what you want to do with your dough ball is dip it in the dry flour. You want to spread it out a little bit in your hands. So using the palm of your hand and your thumb and your second finger of your other hand and just pressing as you go along. You just want to keep pressing to spread it out just a little bit. It makes it easier when you're going to roll. And with this step you want to try to roll it as evenly as possible. Even if it's not round, that's okay. You just want to make sure to spread it out evenly so this way the whole roti is coated with oil on the inside. Once you get to a nice thin stage, you're going to dip your hand in that oil and you just want to spread it out till you get to the end of the roti. Spread it all on the ends as well as in the middle. And you're going to go ahead and sprinkle on some dry flour. Now what I'm going to do is, you could either use your finger like I showed you in the last step, or you could go in with a knife and cut it through the middle. And then you want to fold one end out. You want to fold the other end out and make sure the middle is folded in as well. This starts to create the layers on the inside. And then you want to go from one end and just start rolling it in, like you were rolling a cinnamon roll or something like that. And you want to roll it pretty tight. And once you get to the end and you have that edge, you want to roll it around once and then tuck into the top. And this is what creates all those little layers that you see in the roti once you're done clapping it. So you go ahead, pat it down, and we're going to put it back down on the tray. I wanted to show you guys a different way on how you could oil your roti. It might be a little simpler too for any of you beginners out there. So once you dip your ball of dough into the dry flour, you want to spread it out like I showed before. And once you spread it out, you're going to roll it out as thin as possible. You're doing the exact same step for the other method of oiling the roti. It's just when I add the oil in, I'm going to do something a little bit differently. And the best way to roll is hold both ends and go ahead and roll your hands on the ends. And you'll get it nice and even. And you want to keep moving towards the end of the roti to get those ends nice and thin as well. What you're going to do is you're going to dip your hand into that oil and you want to get it spread all around your roti. And once you get it spread to all sides, you're going to go in with a little bit of dry flour. And then for this step, you're going to go from the middle and cut out. You're not going all the way down like I did for the other method. And then you just want to start folding the roti this way. Almost like you're making a cone. And you want to keep rolling it like that. And then when you get that little flap at the end, you want to roll it around a bit. And you want to tuck that into the end of the roti. You want to get that all in there. And then when you have like this big cone shape, you want to start pressing it down. And once you press it down, you have a nice little cinnamon roll shape. Almost like the other one, but this one is a little process, I just wanted to show you guys another way that you could oil the roti. So once you've rolled it out, you're going to go on with some of that oil. And once you spread it out to the ends, 
you're going to go on with your dry flour again and now what you're going to do is you're just going to keep folding the roti over on itself and then you just want to keep rolling almost like you're making a cinnamon roll again and once you roll you tuck in the end and you're done once you've oiled all of your rotis you're going to go ahead and cover them with a damp paper towel again and you're going to let them sit for anywhere from 10 minutes to about 3 hours it just depends on how much time you have on your hands if you wanted to right now you could go ahead and start cooking but I have some time on my hands today so I'm going to let them sit for about an hour today before I start my cooking process the longer you let them sit the softer your roti All right, guys, after I went ahead and I oiled all of my rotis, I allowed them to sit for about an hour and a half. That's just because I had that time on my hands today. As I said before, you could let it sit from anywhere between 10 minutes to 3 hours. You could even do this overnight if you really wanted to. And I just let it sit for the hour and a half because that's the amount of time I had. But if you wanted to, you could just cook it right away once you were done rolling them as well. They will still be nice and soft. They just get a little softer as you let them sit longer. So at this point, I'm going to start the cooking process. So you want to keep them covered while you're rolling all of your rotis because you don't want them to dry out. And you want to start with the first one that you had oiled. And I want to mention that while I'm rolling this first one out, I have my tawa heating up on a medium high heat so I could start the cooking process. So to roll out your roti, you want to get one of your dough balls and just flatten it out a bit. And you can go with some dry flour and just sprinkle it on the top. For this step, you don't want to use way too much dry flour because what's going to happen is any dry flour that sticks to the dough, it's going to go onto the tawa and it's going to burn. So I like to use as little flour as I can, but you still need enough so this way it doesn't stick to your board. This is also the step where you want to get your roti nice and round. So you should take your time while you're doing this step. Sometimes my roti doesn't come out round, but I'm going to be honest, most of the time it does, but it's just because of practice. You have to practice in order to get your roti round. And I'm not going to roll these out too thick. I want them to be pretty thin. I don't like thick roti. And I think this is actually good for me because this is what's going to fit on my tawa. As you guys can see, it's nice and thin and it's not too thick and it's even, even on the edges. While you're rolling, you want to make sure you get the edges as well. All right guys, so my tawa is nice and hot. As I said, it's gonna be on a medium high heat. That's like the perfect temperature to cook your rotis at. So this way they don't burn and then they cook fast enough. I also have a plate here that I've lined with a paper towel. This is where I'm gonna put my rotis on once they finish cooking and I finish clapping them. If you wanted to, you could go ahead and put these straight in a container as well, but I'm just gonna leave it on the plate for now because we're gonna eat this as soon as they're done cooking. I also wanna mention that I have a bowl filled with oil here. This is what I'm gonna to use to oil the roti while it's cooking and I'm using a brush if you guys remember in my first roti video I used a tissue but I'm gonna be a little civilized for you guys today and I'm gonna go ahead and use the brush you can use whatever works for you you can use the brush you can use the tissue method that I used in my first video some people also like to take the bottom of a flat cup and dip it in the oil and then rub it around the roti too whichever style works for you that's what you should do so since my towel is hot you just want to get your roti on your hand and you want to get it down on your tawa. You're going to let it sit on this side until some bubbles start to form and then we're going to go ahead and flip it and finish cooking it. Once you see that the first side of the roti starts to get a few bubbles on it, you're going to go ahead and flip it and I'm using my hands. As I said before, when you're using your hands, you want to pull it to the edge and quickly flick it with your wrist. So what you want to do as soon as you flip it is oil this one side. The one thing I'm probably not going to do is use a spatula because as I said in my first roti video I don't like having the spatula because it's just a lot to worry about. It's easier for me to just use my hand. So I just flipped it over again and I'm oiling this next side. And this is exactly what you want. All of those nice big bubbles. That's all of the layers that we created when we oil that roti. As soon as you oil the other side you want to flip it again and you can see it's getting nice and brown. Now some people like their roti really crispy. I don't like it too crispy. I like it to have these um, nice brown specks. But as you guys can see, I'm gonna flip it over. I'm gonna take it off now because the other side is nice and brown. As you guys can see, that roti took about two minutes in total to cook. It really doesn't take a lot of time. You don't wanna keep it too long in the tawa or else the roti can start to dry out and get very tough. So once you take it out, you wanna go ahead and clap it. So. 
this is how you do it. You just fold it up and then you start clapping it between your hands. Now the best way to do this is over your sink, but I wanted to show you guys right here so this way you guys could see the full shot. So once you clap it, you're going to see that it's nice and flaky and all of those layers begin to show. Those are the layers we created when we oiled it. Now if you wanted to, you could go ahead and put this in a big mug with the cover or you could put it in one of those Tupperware dishes with the cover and you can cover the dish and just shake it up with the roti inside and the roti will break up. You could also take one of these dish towels or tea towels and go ahead and wrap the roti up inside and start to clap it as well. Whichever way you would like to do, go ahead and do that method because some people I know they don't like to clap it straight in their hand because it can burn their hand. For me, I've been doing this for a little bit so it doesn't really bother my hands too much. But if you're someone who's doing this for the first time or your hands get very, um, are very sensitive, you might want to use a different Before method. I show you guys the finished product, I just wanted to show you guys how to cook another roti. So I took one of my dough balls here and you want to get some dry flour on it. And you want to get enough dry flour on both sides. But remember, you don't want too much or else that extra dry flour is going to burn when you have it on the tawa. Once you have the dry flour on, you're going to get your rolling pin. And you're going to do it pretty carefully, so this way you can have a nice round roti. And if it begins to stick while you're rolling, you can go ahead and add on some more dry flour. And as I said before, don't worry if your roti does not come out round. It's all about the taste. So once you've got a nice round roti, it's time to go ahead and put it on the tawa. Once you get your roti on the tawa, what you're going to do is you're going to wait for some of the small bubbles to pop up on the top. You just want to wait about 30 seconds, 20 to 30 seconds depending on how hot your tawa is. And then you can go ahead and flip. So I see a few little bubbles starting to form. And I'm going to flip it over. And then I'm going to oil this one side with my brush. And if you guys are wondering, roti is actually the first dish that I ever made for my family. The first thing that I ever cooked by myself in the kitchen. I think I was about like 8 or 9 years old when I first made it. So this is a pretty special dish to me. And I have great memories of being in the kitchen right next to my grandmother. Helping her roll out the rotis. I'm pretty sure she got upset with me because mine were never round. Sometimes they were pretty uneven. But those experiences really helped me learn in the kitchen. And I'm grateful for her letting me do that while I was in the kitchen with her. So once I oiled both sides, I flipped them over. I'm going to let it cook for like another 30 seconds. As you guys can see, it has those nice brown specks. I don't like my roti too crunchy, so I'm probably going to take it off in a, just a few seconds. And at this point, I'm just going to fold it in half and take it off. And pretty much as soon as your roti comes off the stove, you want to fold it and you want to clap it. As you guys can see, there's a lot of steam escaping from it. We're separating all those layers from the roti. And look at that. It's really nice and flaky. That's exactly what you want. So you're going to fold it in a triangle. And I'm going to continue cooking all of my rotis and clapping them and I'm going to leave them on this plate and I'm going to come back and show you guys the final product. Alright guys, I have all of my finished rotis here and before I go, I just wanted to show you guys how soft and how flaky these rotis are. They're really nice and pliable and you can see all of those layers running throughout that roti. And that's what we created when we were oiling the roti, so that step is pretty important. And as I said before, if you wanted them to be a bit crispier and darker on the outside, you could leave them on the tawa a little longer. But for me, this was perfect. They're nice and pliable and just really soft. All right, guys, and so, there it is again. Another great recipe down. I hope you guys enjoyed me resharing my roti recipe with you guys. I hope that the video quality was much better for you. The camera was much closer now, so this way you can get a more step-by-step -step and in-depth method of making my roti. This roti, I promise, is going to come out nice and soft and fluffy, just like you saw in the previous screen. It's amazing, guys. So once again, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so yet. Remember, all you got to do is click that little red button with the bell on it down below, and you'll be able to see my videos as I post them. Also, don't forget to comment down below. Tell me if you tried this roti recipe and if you liked it or not. And tell me what you guys would like me to make next. Once again, I thank you guys for watching all my videos, subscribing, and just giving my channel lots of love. 
Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys again with another one of my awesome recipes. <laughs>